good early morning where it's still a little dark out and it's our first, what is it? Vlogoween. Yay! Today is October 5th. It's October. I am going to talk for 30 seconds about what I did this weekend. And last week I mostly painted. I was painting in my kitchen. Oh God, I was painting everywhere. My husband was painting in our bedroom this weekend. We replaced plugs in the kitchen. Yeah. So we were busy that way. I did get a little bit of crafting done, which I will show. Um, I just want to talk about my buddies here. So my pumpkin sits on my, uh, my sideboard in my lounge and the lantern sits in, the, I have a, a bow shaped bay window in my lounge as well. And she sits there in the center of a display, which is basically an autumnal um, leaf display with uh, pumpkins and gourds and things in it um, <clears throat> with uh, lights harvest lights on and yeah she looks awful pretty downstairs I will be taking pictures of what I have up for Halloween and you know dropping them in sporadically a couple maybe in this one <clears throat> and then in every episode up until the day before Halloween which is Friday the 30th of October I am just having coffee this morning it's not a pumpkin spice latte but this I got at um, Starbucks in Virginia when I lived there a few years ago. And it says Team PSL. And it's got a little pumpkin and it all looks like it's been knit. It's pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever showed it. Maybe I have. Mm. Oh my god, I need that coffee so much this morning. Oh, and there's no makeup on. I'm sorry, but it's just after 7. And I just got my husband off to work after making his lunch and putting a load of laundry in. So, since I podcast last week, there has been a bit of crafting, not a ton. I just wanted to show that before I talk about the scary movies. So, very briefly, the first thing I'm going to show you is the... And I don't know which side I'm going to put the picture up on, but it's the uh, Ouija Sal by um, Tiny Modernist that I've been showing to you guys. Uh every time I podcast recently. Uh, the last time you guys saw it, I think I was just finishing up this pumpkin or starting it. I can't remember. <clears throat> so I've gotten this pumpkin done and this pumpkin done. Here, I'll come in closer so you all can see. So he's so cute. And he's so cute. He should be an emoticon, this one. But yeah, so I've moved up here. This will be the words yes and no. And there's this like giant butterfly that goes in between us. So it's going to look like super cool. But it's getting there. We're getting there. I have made up my mind and surrendered to the fact that I will not finish by Halloween. But that's okay. You know, that's okay. It gives me something to work on with my my country cross stitch this, this winter. Excuse me, this winter. Um, so the next thing I worked on. Little balls of wonderful. I did some knitting. I actually did some knitting on the sweater, but I wasn't bringing that up because there's not enough of it to brag about. And to be honest with you, I think I might have done maybe, maybe four rounds because it was hurting my shoulder because I haven't knit in so long. So, yeah. So, I will put a picture somewhere here of the pattern for this fingerless glove. It's Halloween themed, obviously. And... I got three rows done on it yesterday because it is time consuming and I started it right before I was supposed to get up and make dinner. But yeah, I was like, oh my god, I'm going to pick those up. And I did. So this is how far we've gotten. It's 20 more rows until this fingerless mitt is done. So this is the um, Scary Pumpkin mitt. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at his little face. So, <clears throat> as you can see, we've got some uh, we've got some skeletons around. We have nearly a whole pumpkin face, and then on the back, where the thumb gusset is. I mean, I just love this thumb gusset. That is amazing. I love that. It's like a spider web pattern. So yeah, so the um, the pattern is easy to follow. The, it's got a chart, which I love. I don't like written instructions for my color work 
pattern or charts are fine. It's got the only thing I don't like, which is like I cringed when I read it, was a twisted rib cuff. So yeah, I just don't like to knit into the back. But anyway, yeah, so super pleased with that. I am going to be working on those this morning because I'm going to do some laundry and I'm going to sit down and knit. Kind of using my laundry as an excuse to stay downstairs and craft for a while. Sneaky Halloween. So, right. what did I watch? I'm going to move. I'll move this way a little bit. So, uh, Ian's towel's over the rail. I'm going to hurt him. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so the first movie I watched was on Friday morning, and that was Tales of Halloween. So, put a picture here somewhere. I don't know if any of you have seen this, but it's like um, a compilation of different stories that kind of all meld together at the end, kind of like Trick or Treat, um, if anybody's seen Trick or Treat. Uh, Tales of Halloween isn't as good as Trick or Treat. There are some pretty gory things in it. It's very, it's not like, well, it is violent, but it's not like, you know, you know, John Wayne Gacy violent, if you know what I mean, which is, sorry, that was probably offensive to somebody, but whatever. Um, so yeah, so what did I like about Tales of From Halloween? The first thing I loved about this is that Adrian Barbeau um, of The Fog fame and several other things, including the program, the TV show Maud, um, voiced over, and I love her. I love her in everything she does. She has been in um, Creep Show. She's just, she's fantastic. I love her. I just love her. Um, the the actual shots, the camera shots were pretty good. Pretty good in most of the stories. Um, the concept was great. Uh, but yeah. Um, I As a spoiler, so this is a spoiler, one of the stories is about two parents who eat their children's Halloween candy and this story is conveyed to a young man, <clears throat> a little boy, um, by his babysitter's boyfriend and then that whole thing starts to evolve and, you know, it, it happens to them as well and that is super creepy. What don't I like about it? Well, there are some pretty violent bits. I am all into Michael Myers and Jason and slasher films and puking little girls with their heads spinning around. I don't mind that. This was blatant little kids who were kind of like spooky creature things and walking up to a house, ringing the doorbell, saying trick or treat, and then stabbing somebody in the gut like 55 times and then proceeding to murder everybody in the house. I. No. Um, I, I do, I do like slasher films, I won't lie, but that for me is kind of an over the top act. So yeah, was it a great first Halloween to kick it off? Probably not. I should have kicked off with something else, but yeah, it was okay. It was okay. Um, if I was going to give it a one to five bats, I would probably give it three. I give it three bats. So there you go. So then on Friday night we watched Halloween 2018. Now this is the, uh, this series is kind of mucked up. So anything after Halloween 2 up until Halloween 2018 is kind of, you know, like in a dream state. Those, those, it's almost like a serial and it doesn't really count. It's just somebody else grabbed the story and made it into what they wanted to. Uh, but Jamie Lee Curtis, who was in the original uh, Halloween, is in 2018. So you take Jamie Lee Curtis from Halloween 1 and 2 and then immediately move forward. You can watch the other ones. I watch the other ones. I'm going to watch all of the other ones. Um, but you, you completely move yourself forward to 2018. And so this is 40 years later. And um, Jamie's older because obviously Jamie Lee Curtis is in her late 50s, early 60s in this, and um, Jamie's falling apart. Basically, she is prepared for war with Michael. She knows Michael's going to try to come and get her again, 
and Michael's being transferred to a prison from a maximum security mental health place where Michael has obviously not gotten any better. So Jamie has prepared her home and she's tried to prepare her daughter, but because of the way in which she was preparing her daughter, her daughter was taken away from her by social services, very young, and her daughter doesn't accept that Michael is a real thing and she thinks her mom's mentally ill. And so, you know, things happen and it culminates into this battle with Michael. And I'm not going to say anything more than that. I loved this film for a lot of reasons. There was one reason that I didn't, but there are many reasons why I do. One, Jamie Lee Curtis and her original role is just for a Halloween aficionado, a Halloween series aficionado. Um, that's just a gift, right? Just having her in the film is a gift. And so that makes me quite happy. Um, It, the shots are all great. It's creepy. It takes you back right back to the first Halloween and that's great. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about why I loved it because it's going to, I'll end up giving things away and I don't, if you haven't seen it, you should see it. Um, the one thing, two things that I didn't like, the two things that I didn't like are the daughter's husband was a massive asshole. He was just not a good person part he didn't fit at all and his being so remote intellectually to everyone else this kind of ruined that part of the daughter's life for me also the granddaughter um and i should have told you who these people are played by but the granddaughter has a boyfriend who is obviously a little bit of a pothead and um, he drinks a little bit with his mates at a Halloween party and dance at school. I mean, and he's also a bit of a dick. And I mean, it was typical, it was a typical high school scenario where they're at a dance. She goes away to take a phone call from one of her friends who can't be at the dance. And she comes back and he's being kissed by this other girl. And then there, this whole drama ensues as it does when you're 17 years old. So yeah, so that was really good. The next movie I watched, which was on Saturday night, was Halloween Resurrection. This also contained Jamie Lee Curtis in a very short, short sort of cameo opening of the film uh, movie. Now, Halloween Resurrection is hated by a lot of people. I am not one of them. I kind of like Resurrection. I kind of think, you know what? It's It was of its day. Um, it's sort of one of those reality TV things and I think it was okay I think the way it played out was okay I think the shots were okay um yeah so this guy starts this company called Dangertainment and basically what they've done is they've gone into the old Myers house and they set it up and put you know trigger objects in to scare these kids who they enlist to put cameras on their heads and their faces so people can see them and while they explore the Myers house on Halloween night and of course, Michael shows up. Michael's probably been there for 20 years and things happen. That's all I'm gonna tell you about this film. I liked it, a lot of people didn't. I mean, you have to go into these films knowing you're, it's not Gone with the Wind or Private Ryan or anything that's ever won an Academy Award because they're not that. That is not what these are about. So yeah, so Jamie Lee Curtis is in the beginning of this one. She's in a mental institution. Um, basically because of Halloween H2O and we will talk about that and then I will fall back to resurrection when I talk about Halloween H2O which was Halloween 20 years later the next thing I watched was yesterday and it was so much lighter and I love it uh, but it's Halloween Town with Carrie Fisher's mom yes and um, I'm I'm just gonna have to I'll be better prepared because I'd forgotten that I was out to have to talk about all these. But yeah, so I can just put a list of the characters here or something. If I don't, then I'll do it for Friday for my next films. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so Halloween Town is... It is a cheerful Disney, made by Disney, film about a grandma 
who is Debbie Reynolds, who is a witch, and she lives in a place called Halloween Town, which is in another dimension. Her daughter married an, a human. She is also a witch, but she married a human, and she lives in our world. Well, Grandma comes to visit the kids on Halloween. An argument with the daughter ensues, and the kids, the, the oldest daughter, who is also a witch, Marnie, she is not, she's going to miss her training, and she will lose her chance at being a witch if she doesn't get to Halloween Town for training. And so she overhears her mom and her grandmother talking, and her mom tells her grandmother that she has to leave. Um, so grandma walks to this magic bus, and she is going to get on this bus. Marnie has heard all this, and she and her brother, and unbeknownst to she and her brother, her little sister, escape and get to the bus stop and crawl into the back of the bus and end up in Halloween Town. There's an evil mayor, and grandma's trying to stop him. But it ends up that the kids really need to participate in this because things go down. Now, Halloween Town is light, bright, airy, great fun for younger kids. If you've got grandkids or you've got children of your own, I definitely recommend finding this film either on, you know, DVD or some streaming um, apparatus because, yeah, it is definitely worth the watch. Kids will love it. Make some popcorn get some apple cider or I mean if you're in England it's cloudy cider cloudy apple juice and yeah give it a gander so that's about it I that's what I watched um, I didn't give bats to anything but Tales of Halloween so I don't know if I'm gonna use bats or pumpkins we'll work this out and then it'll be better next year the radio station I'm going to talk about right now is Horror Theater. I'll put an image of their logo in it somewhere here. Um, it is a 1940s radio station. Like I said, that is a serial drama radio station that only plays um, the spooky um, radio plays that they had in the 1950s. You're, or 1940s, 30s and 40s. You're in some in the 50s, actually. But if you want something to just listen to while you're doing housework or while you're knitting and you don't really want the TV on, um, I suggest you get tune in and put your VPN on because it's American and they won't let you listen to it otherwise. Or you can actually go online to Horror Theater and there's a player in their browser and or in their web page, sorry, and you can actually listen to it there. So I guess I'm going to let you go. It's getting light out now and I need to get back in my casket. <laughs> before I burn up. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I will be back on Friday. I hope to have that mitten either done or damn close to it and so I can cast on the other one. And I definitely hope to have the butterfly and yes and no on here. So, but we will see. So um, from me to you, happy Halloween. Take care. I'll see you Friday. Bye.